Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to the Gold CLI demo. Uh, this is a very big uh, release for us, so uh, thank you for, for tuning in. We've got a lot of information to cover. Uh, first thing I want to do today, look at my notes here, uh, is describe what is this CLI for. Uh, and maybe actually we should stop using that abbreviation <laughs> uh, or without describing it. CLI stands for Command Line Interface. Uh, this is mostly for developers, uh, and uh, developers would use this CLI for managing a gold node, uh, similar to how the Bitcoin CLI uh, and Dash CLI are used for, for managing Bitcoin and Dash nodes. Uh, gold is very different from these others, however. Uh, it is not a blockchain, it is a block tree. Uh, so uh, what that means is that the uh, data is much more rich. Uh, here we have a, a diagram of the block tree uh, data structure, and you can see that we have uh, keys, audio, pictures, documents, uh, as well as uh, ledgers, which is um, kind of the functionality that a typical blockchain would provide. Uh, we also have full websites and uh, various passwords and things like that. Uh, so. Uh, these CLI tools that we're going to be going through today will help you manage your local perspective, your local instance of uh, your branch of the block tree. And by the way, all these resources are available online, either on gold.tech or on gold.io. Uh, and specifically, this uh, block tree diagram is on gold.io slash img slash blocktree.jpg, uh, which is on the screen now. Uh, so these are the main resources we're going to be go over, going over today. Uh, feel free to follow along through the websites. Uh, additionally, on the gold.tech website, uh, it describes all these packages, including installation instructions. Uh, so uh, you're welcome to also install all of these commands as, as we go and uh, try, try using them. Uh, let's go back to the notes, see where we're at. Uh, so the most important thing about the, to, to understand about the block tree data structure is that it mirrors your user home directory. Uh, so you know, if, you, if you log into your computer, um, regardless of the operating system, uh, you'll typically see in your home directory something like pictures, documents, uh, oftentimes it says music instead of audio, but uh, you know you have all of these common um, media types and, and directories, uh, and we repurpose these and are uh, synchronizing them to our decentralized network uh, with proper encryption and, and permissions. Additionally, we added some uh, required applications like this dot password store directory uh, goes in your home directory when you have uh, the program pass installed, uh, which is a password manager. Uh, and uh, additional other prerequisites uh, that we would require are uh, PGP or GNU PG, uh, which is a, a reference implementation of PGP. And uh, this pass program, uh, Git, and Ledger CLI, uh, just to, I think I have all the links here on Telegram, so let's go down. Yeah, so uh, for those of you who are in Telegram chat, uh, we've listed the prerequisites here. Uh, Git is a very common program uh, available for all operating systems, as is uh, GPG uh, and, and Ledger. Password store is not currently available for Windows. Uh, I'm not sure if it works on Mac, but for all of these, we've ported them to JavaScript, and uh, you should be able to use them on any, any operating system going forward. Not exactly today, but uh, very, very close to, to being able to work on Windows, for instance. Uh, so let's, let's dive into the, the CLI now that we've had some, some overview. Uh, the first thing you might want to do uh, is install the main uh, gold CLI uh, package, uh, which you can do using this command npm i minus g gold CLI. Uh, this 
this program is a wrapper for all of the other uh, gold tools. Uh, so it discovers uh, locally installed commands that are the format gold slash whatever and makes them available uh, under the main gold command. Uh, so if you run npm i minus g gold cli, uh, you should have uh, pretty much all of these installed and uh, you should be able to use the commands that we'll, you can see here. A uh, quick review of the commands, uh, you can, there's a subcommand for, all these are subcommands, there's a command for user, uh, to manage your user, get list and check users. Uh, there's a env environment detection command, uh, which helps us determine uh, whether we should use the uh, reference programs like pass or whether we should try to uh, use our JavaScript implementations. For instance, if you're on Windows, as we mentioned, we're trying to make it compatible with all systems. Uh, we have a git command, which uh, wraps the uh, main git program. Again, all of these uh, choose whether, depending on the environment, whether to use the reference or the JavaScript uh, re-implementation. Uh, but regardless, you can do special git uh, commands. Uh, we have our own mail system. Uh, which uses, all these things use PGP. Uh, many of you may already use PGP with your mail. Uh, we are building this into a decentralized mail system, uh, but at the moment it simply integrates nicely into uh, your, your client and does backups. Uh, we have a key ring uh, for all of your PGP keys for managing those, uh, and this key ring additionally will support uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and other types of, of keys in the in the near future. Uh, using the key ring is pass, uh, which is password management. And uh, then we have the ledger, uh, the ledger command, which helps you manage various gold ledgers. Uh, and this is, again, the, the traditional blockchain functionality. Uh, so you could simulate or even import all of Bitcoin, for instance, into a gold ledger. And we'll go over that later. Uh, next, we have random, uh, which is a cryptographically secure random number and string generator. Uh, we use this for various cryptographic uses and uh, other privacy things like obfuscating your activities, uh, your schedule, and that sort of thing. Uh, we have some basic file system tools. Uh, and finally, all, through all these CLIs, you can use help and command or minus minus help to get more information. Uh, additionally, you can pass the minus u and then your username to any of these commands, and it will run as a particular user. Uh, I'm not going to do that today um, because it's, it's essentially the same. You just would specify that, and, and it would run as an alternate identity. Uh, but it will default to my, uh, my main identity, which is ISIS-D. Uh, so this, as I said, this uh, discovers other commands uh, and then uh, wraps them all together. Uh, here on the left, you can see some of these other commands. So there's uh, gold mcli, for instance, uh, and uh, fscli and so on. Uh, so each of these is accessible through the main gold CLI program. Uh, you shouldn't need to install them uh, individually. Uh, however, this is all relatively new. So if you ever get a error saying, uh, you know, gold FS CLI not found, uh, then just install the, the individual package that it's. Uh, so there's the, the CLI for each of these commands, uh, which is how you would run it from the command line. Uh, and each of those commands has additionally a library. Uh, so uh, if you're a programmer, you would uh, use JavaScript and import the library uh, to do these various, uh, to use these, these various tools. Uh, and if you're a system administrator, then you would use the command line interface version of the tools. And I would recommend if you are a new developer to this to look at the command line interface for examples of how to use the libraries because each of the command lines uses a library. Uh, so let's let's go over some of the 
uh, first commands you would run. Uh, you know, there's really a lot here, um, as you can see. Uh, so we're not going to go over everything today, but we're at least going to go over the initialization and uh, some of the more important or, or unique um, commands. So let me clear this. Uh, to in initialize your account, uh, you would do, sorry, I've got the command down here. Here we go. Uh, you would run this command. Uh, I'll paste this in the chat as well. So this, this command runs uh, init for all the various uh, subcommands and we'll uh, set up your local system. Uh, so if I run this now, mine's already set up, but you'll, you'll see the same steps anyway. Uh, so it asks my, for my username. Uh, in this case, mine is ISSD and it already senses it. It asks for my full name, uh, which will become public information. Uh, this is optional. It will actually default to your username. Uh, so you can maintain pseudonymity, and that's what I recommend for uh, secondary accounts or accounts that you, you want greater privacy on. Uh, as a reminder, the main feature of gold is identity and uh, governance. Uh, so it's useful to have a identity for your real person or, or your main uh, account, let's say. Uh, Additionally, it asks for an email address, which is, again, uh, public information. Uh, this one is uh, somewhat required, depending on what sort of Git host you're going to use. Uh, the reason why we have these two, is, uh, these two data points is because they are, are part of the PGP key uh, user ID uh, metadata. Uh, and a lot of Git hosts like GitHub and Bitbucket uh, will actually check this information. So they'll, they'll make sure that the email address is yours uh, before letting you pair your, your PGP key. Uh, and this is generally good security practice and it's not uh, a huge privacy um, compromise since email addresses are disposable. Uh, next, it will ask me for uh, to specify my the PGP key that I want to use with this user. Uh, I have a number of them here, but uh, we can, it's already selected my uh, default one. Uh, next, I think it's going to try to initialize pass. Ha. Uh, it's using this other key. I'll just exit out of this because it's you don't need to see all that. Uh, oh, yeah. And then it tries to configure various Git hosts. Uh, so, for instance, it's uh, asking me if I want to configure a Bitbucket. Uh, I'm going to say no to maintain my own uh, password integrity. Uh, but if you say yes, it will ask you for your username, password, and OAuth token. Uh, it will do the same for GitHub and GitLab. Uh, one of these is required. Uh, alternately, you can supply all three, and it will mirror all of your, your data to all three. I have all three configured, uh, but uh, you don't need to. Uh, all of this, these systems are integrated, so if you do fill these out, uh, it will actually store the passwords in pass, and you can see them here. For instance, I have all three configured, GitLab, uh, GitHub, and Bitbucket, and uh, it I can use this as my main password manager. So when I want to log into these sites, I, I open this QT Pass program and uh, you know copy my copy my password. Right, it's copied to my clipboard now. Uh, but additionally, if uh, the, one of the uh, scripts wants to use it, uh, for instance, to push something to GitHub or Bitbucket or uh, perform some other account activity, it actually reads it out of the password store programmatically. Uh, asking for the password to my key, which is used to encrypt all the passwords if it's not already unlocked. Uh, just for this session, I turned on caching, so we shouldn't see too many key prompts uh, for uh, brevity. 
Uh, but assuming that you've, you've answered all these questions, you're now locally configured. You have uh, picked a username. You've supplied the metadata for your PGP key. As you see, it has my name and, and email. Uh, you have picked or generated a PGP key. Um, by the way, if you didn't have one, it would have asked you to generate one at, at that step. Uh, and you have configured your Git hosts to, uh, to work uh, or to host all of your, your data. Uh, so you would then be set up uh, and uh, specifically uh, all this configuration is stored in your uh, git config file. Uh, so for instance, we see it has my username, name, email, signing key. Uh, some additional things that it turns on is GPG signing for all commits. Uh, it records my usernames for the various uh, networks that I'm um, a member of in case they're different uh, because you're only guaranteed to have your gold username. It's not guaranteed to be the same, for instance, on GitHub and Bitbucket. Uh, and we specify some special uh, diff and merge tools, uh, which should make it a little easier for, uh, it's a better user interface for um, people less familiar with Git. Uh, so a little more about the, uh, the block tree data structure. Uh, there are public versions of these uh, config files that let you know about other people's identities. Uh, and these are stored in the dot .files uh, directory or branch and then by each person's uh, account name. So for instance, we can look up the main gold configuration uh, and see that on GitHub, uh, the username for gold is not, or the organization for gold is not gold, but gold coin. Gold was not available on, on GitHub. Uh, and again, that will be programmatically read and, and uh, used throughout the, uh, throughout the, the tools. Uh, so one example of how that would work is if we do, um, we can do, we can delete all of the remotes from the local repository here, and then we can run add. And if we list them, uh, we will see that uh, for GitHub, for gold, uh, it used the gold coin name instead of gold, uh, respecting their configuration. It additionally configured all three uh, because gold has all three accounts uh, set up, as does my personal user. It registered all three URLs. Uh, so when I push, it will push to all three. Um, other uh, kind of unique quirks about our Git configuration, uh, when you uh, commit, it will try to work upwards in the tree. Uh, so if I try to commit here in gold, it will go up one level and try to uh, commit the change to the gold branch in ledger, and then up one more to try to commit the ledger change to my personal perspective. Uh, the remotes are always, or the branches are always named after users. Uh, so you'll notice there's no master branch. There's also no origin remote. Uh, that's because each branch is owned by a user, owned by a uh, group, and uh, they control and govern the contents of that branch. Additionally, each uh, location in the tree, each node, has a, an official observer. Uh, so for instance, in, in this ledger gold, the official observer is gold, while my individual perspective on it is ISSD. And if I commit something to ISSD, it is my opinion of the gold ledger, uh, and only when it reaches consensus would it actually uh, be merged into the gold branch of ledger gold. Uh, all other uh, nodes, all other nodes in the uh, graph sense, um, individual points on the tree, directories if you will, uh, have an official observer that has similar rules. Either that person has to sign or that group has to have consensus for, for anything to be merged into uh, that directory. Uh, so that's, that's pretty much it for uh, gold git and initialization. Uh, 
there's actually there is one more important thing. Uh, gold git config uh, helps you uh, manage uh, config files. Uh, I can additionally list all keys by um, phew, there's a lot of keys uh, by passing this uh, quoted star command. Uh, again, this is just a little more simplified compared to, for instance, uh, the default uh, output that GPG has, which is, uh, it is machine parsable and, and you can do, uh, that's, that's how we get to it, but it's, it's much uh, messier and, and harder to, to parse. Uh, so addition, in addition to making it work on other platforms, we, we've hopefully just made it we simplified it a little bit and made it easier to, to uh, use programmatically. Uh, just briefly, other, other commands you can do with keys. You can import and export keys. Uh, so for instance, I can export my, yeah, there's my, my public key. Uh, for all of these, you can pass the minus S uh, option uh, to perform actions on the secret key. So if I'd done gold keys export minus S, then this would be my private key that you would see here. I'm not going to do that for obvious reasons. <laughs> uh, you can additionally specify input and output files uh, to pipe things directly into or out of a file. Uh, other commands that uh, you're likely to, to work with, uh, particularly if you're on uh, Windows, you might need to use this gold pass as opposed to, since there's no uh, native pass available to you. Uh, pass is encrypted password management. Uh, this Qt pass is a, a graphical user interface for, for the pass program. Uh, but even if you're on Windows, you should be able to use this gold pass uh, to do the basic uh, password management things that you would need. Uh, and it's all available programmatically. I not going to show you any of these because that would reveal one of my passwords. I'm sorry, I didn't have a password set up. I guess we could we could insert one. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's too much work. But uh, so you you got you can show a password. Uh, you can insert new passwords, generate one, you know, remove one, move them, and so on, so on. Uh, additionally, this performs actions on subfolders. So if if we look in uh, the directory where all this data is stored, the, the branch password store, we'll see again that there's uh, subdirectories for each uh, account. Uh, so for instance, mine is in ISISD, uh, and they're, they're further organized from there. Uh, just for information, you can see each of these is encrypted for a different person, which you can see in this .gpg ID file. Uh, so this one has my key ID and is encrypted for me. Uh, but for example, uh, if I was to look at a different user, uh, I would try to uh, uh, yeah, GPG ID. There we go. Uh, if I was to try to read one of the files in, for instance, this user's uh, account or the, their one of their passwords. Uh, I do not have this key, and and I would not be able to decrypt it. Uh, so even though I'm I'm backing up uh, the files for this user, it is not something that I can read. Uh, and actually, uh, now that I uh, say that, I realize why there wasn't one available in CZ uh, because this is empty, uh, which is an interesting feature of Gold. You do not have to store everyone else's data. Uh, and in this case, I've chosen not to synchronize this particular branch this, of this user's data. Uh, this is another big difference between a block tree and a blockchain. Uh, even though everything is present in a universal sense and someone is contractually, this CZ user is, is contractually obligated to, to maintain this data, I'm not required to maintain that data for them and I can, I can save space. Uh, this is very similar to um, this is very similar to 
uh, what Ethereum is trying to do now, which they call sharding. Uh, and we can see, yeah, so here it says null. Uh, so I, I do not have this CZ branch checked out, but I do have a hash reference to it. Uh, so I am observing the state of that branch, even though I don't have to keep all of the data for it. I just keep uh, a hash, a record of the hash changes for it. And as more and more users and, and uh, user branches are added, uh, I will only have to store hashes for them and not all of the data. Uh, so uh, that, that's some of the uh, detailed tools that we would use. Uh, to go back to the, the high level for a second, uh, the, your actual user home is also a, a Git repository. Everything in the computer is, is a Git repository and is also signed. Uh, so if I go to my home and I run status, uh, it actually checks all the various uh, branches and everything, so that's why it takes a minute. Uh, but it will tell me, you know, what, in, in my perspective, which things have changed, which things haven't. Uh, this is my development computer, so there's actually a lot that's, that's changed, uh, which really affects our uh, demo here today. But uh, the main thing that you would want to see is uh, this dot block tree directory. Uh, which tracks all the other user perspectives. Uh, so I can uh, check on a different user uh, and see their overall state. Uh, so for example, how do I list it again? <laughs> Sorry, I'm not, not as used to the, the native git commands anymore. Uh, status probably. No, I think I just haven't initialized this. Sorry, this is a little, as I said, this is a, a demo or a dev computer. But we can look it up in uh, Git, uh, one of the hosts. As I mentioned, it's all, uh, it's all synchronized. Uh, and you can see, uh, in this case, it's out of date since I've been developing for 21 days. I haven't synchronized it properly. Uh, but you can see the, the various hashes of other accounts. So I, I'm recording their states, and some of them have consensus. So for instance, these four all have the same hash, uh, which means that they have complete consensus about the network. Uh, other ones do not have the same hash and maybe a, a header behind, and we could, uh, we could measure that. Sorry, we're having a, some audio trouble. Uh, one, one more uh, little distinction about this. Uh, we've standardized all of the uh, branches and remote names, but we've also standardized the repository names. Uh, so if, if we look at my uh, main account on GitHub, we'll, we'll see some pretty strange, seemingly strange names. Uh, and these you can uh, you can access by looking at by using the command gold get path to find out what the the path of a particular uh, directory is. So if I go to block tree, for instance, it tells me uh, yeah underscore block tree, which is what we were just looking at. Uh, that's because we're not allowed to put a, a period first as the first character of the name. Uh, some other things. Uh, for all other repositories, we uh, connect the directories with dashes. Uh, so for example, this is in my home directory, slash IO, slash HTTP, slash gold tech. This is a gold tech website. Uh, most of these, uh, actually all of these uh, command line interface and, and other libraries are in JavaScript. So they're in this tech.js node modules uh, branch. And uh, this helps us to uh, easily maintain the, the kind of consensus um, or to easily compare consensus of uh, different branches for, for different users because the, the names and remotes and all these things are standardized. I can just say, what does this user think about TechJS, Node Modules, Gold CLI? And I'll get their, their perspective. Uh, last is the home directory is actually called perspective. Uh, this is so that we don't each have one named after our, ourselves individually. And if you 
uh, look at the perspective branch. It does not have anything unique to you inside it. Uh, so, for example, inside documents, Well, I control the contents on the, the official observer of this ISSD documents branch. Uh, I'm only observing states of these others, uh, similar to, to how it was in, uh, in password store and ledger and some of these other directories. And uh, what this means is that we can have, we can measure consensus about the overall state. Uh, so we can say, you know, do you have hash number A8DE blah 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 for documents GG? And do you have hash number 22F8E for Casi Cielo? Uh, and if we have the same hashes for each of these, we will have the same hash for the main documents branch. Uh, and therefore, we can also have the same hash for our overall perspective branch, uh, which is how we determine holistic consensus between, between users and groups. Uh, let's see what else, what other commands we've got. Uh, probably the last, uh, you know, most important command that, that you would need to know about as a, a developer getting started with this is ledger. Uh, in this case, we are, uh, this ledger command does not do too much unique. Uh, the reason being that uh, Ledger is already available on all the major operating systems, and uh, has has uh, very it's already a CLI, uh, so we don't really need to do very much to it. Um, in the library, there's a lot of uh, differences that make the output um, consumable programmatically, uh, that standardize the number of decimal places and uh, managing the commodities and, and things like that. Uh, but the important thing is that there's a cache. Uh, so all the ledger files are fragmented uh, and the format is uh, timestamp.dat per transaction. Uh, so for example, we can look at this transaction of mine to see uh, the contents. Uh, it took place uh, last December 17th. It was a, a sale of gold uh, from my account, ISSD, to this other account, Gold Jesus. Uh, you can see you can how you interpret this is that my assets went down. I had 2,500 gold in my assets. Those are being taken out in this transaction. That registers an expense. This other user, Gold Jesus, his assets went up a corresponding amount and he had a matching income. Uh, so this is a, a typical gold transaction. Uh, it's timestamped and uh, each user can only make one transaction file per second, which avoids uh, double spends. Uh, and each user uh, additionally has to uh, maintain, has to agree not to try to double spend or try to um, defraud the network in any way. Uh, if you do, you are all of these things will be tracked, and we can tell uh, the timestamps and, and differences and things like that, and adjudicate the situation. Uh, but as you see, these are, are fragmented, uh, and this is is to maintain the governance. So only I can uh, make transactions in the directory for my user, and all transactions debiting my account must be in that directory. Uh, therefore, only I can debit my account. Uh, but Ledger, the program, uh, does not naturally handle multiple files. Uh, let's see how. I, uh, this is a really big man page. But uh, normally, you to use Ledger, you would say Ledger minus F for the file, and then uh, the path to the file. Uh, so let's look at this one again, uh, and then you would run a command like bal. Uh, so this is the balance of the ledger that is that one transaction. Uh, so, you know, if we were to just look just at that one transaction, then my assets would be negative 2,500, uh, which is clearly a, a bad state. Uh, and if we want to get a, a whole picture of the uh, ledger, 
uh, we either need to pass it to standard in, uh, which we could do uh, using a, a dash, uh, or we need to cache it, right? So if we run gold ledger cache, it creates this cache file uh, called ledger, is it here? Ledger.cache, yeah. Uh, so this has all of the ledgers, including the price data and commodity definitions and, and uh, different different things included. Uh, it has all of the transactions that were found, uh, and you can you can run this you can run uh, the the main ledger CLI with this to get uh, overall information about all of the ledgers. Uh, additionally, uh, you know one one easy way to to deal with this is to provide a second argument. Uh, so, for example, you know, I put ISSD here, uh, which shows all of the accounts that have ISSD in the name. Uh, so, you know, it has my equity in the GG group. It has my main account, you know, all of my assets. Uh, I've actually created a, a number of sub-accounts, like a, a pool for a CAD. Uh, I have... Litecoin and Ethereum and Bitcoin all, all tracked in my uh, ledger. Uh, I have uh, a CAD, Litecoin, Bitcoin, uh, another, um, we'd say, foreign or external chain assets tracked in my account. Uh, I also have gold native ledger assets, uh, which are gold and GG in my account. Uh, and uh, additionally, it shows you know, the various sub-accounts like income, expenses, and, and so on. Uh, at the bottom, it'll just show a summary. Uh, so that's a convenient way to, to access this information of, of accounts. Uh, programmatically, it's, it's going to just search through all the individual files, and this cache is not included in Git uh, for... Um, for, what do you call it, <laughs> uh, performance, uh, because in Git, uh, e each time a file changes, the complete copy of it is stored. So you don't want files to grow. You want small files that will not change. Uh, so that's, that's one of the reasons why we picked this uh, overall uh, data structure of, of small permanent files. Uh, to uh, take a step back. That's my desktop, that's convenient. Uh, if we look at the ledger branch, uh, we see there's a number of different types of uh, subdirectories that could exist. Uh, most of these are gold contracts. Uh, so inside, this is a, well, this notation means it's a custom node. Uh, and then the uh, diamond means a user node. So uh, each user has their own uh, ledger inside gold, right? Or inside any gold contract. And then it's timed at that, which is what we've been seeing. Uh, but for instance, for Bitcoin and Ethereum and the others, uh, that's a different type of ledger, a different type of contract, a chain contract. Uh, and inside would be txhash.dat. Ha uh, and uh, finally, uh, this part is not live yet, but we would also have a market. Uh, some of this is, is live, but in a slightly different format, actually. Uh, inside the market contract would be a quote folder, so let's say BTC, a base folder, so let's say USD, actually switch those, sorry. A quote would be USD, base would be BTC. Uh, and then you would have prices by time. Uh, so you would say, you know, on on this day at uh, 1343, the price of Bitcoin in dollars was such and such. Uh, and other people could observe that, could agree or disagree, uh, and it could become an oracle for contracts. Uh, additionally, uh, each user uh, can uh, make offers, uh, or will be able to very soon, uh, for each pairing of quote, base pairs, uh, which is a contract for sale of goods uh, using this legal contract. Uh, 
And generally, this is how we would encourage developers to, to work with gold, uh, to uh, put all of the resources that go into your application or your user experience, including the legal agreements. Uh, An ERC-20 contract could check uh, whether your address was a known gold address uh, and whether uh, it had a, uh, officially approved uh, KYC information. Uh, so for example, you could say, you know, a, a particular arbitrator or third party is going to review ev everyone's utility and bank statements who is going to participate in the ICO. Uh, they must have an Ethereum address registered on gold and that uh, auditor must sign off and approve the uh, statements and then you can, can participate in the Ethereum smart contract. Uh, so that's, that's a, a summary of the kind of cross-chain functionality and, and cross-branch functionality, how you would uh, use one part of the block tree contracts or key registration uh, from, from another part. Uh, programmatically, you should be able to to deal with all of these using uh, th these various command line tools. Uh, additionally, uh, you know we have some some recommended programs. Uh, so, for example, this is the uh, user interface for PGP that will help you encrypt or decrypt things from your clipboard or files, help you manage other people's keys. Uh, you've seen already. A couple of times this QT pass, uh, which is user interface for managing your passwords. Uh, there's much deeper integration uh, that that we have. Uh, in fact, all of the emails in this system are also encrypted and backed up. Uh, this is using a, pro, a, a tool called offline IMAP. Yeah, here we go. Uh, so uh, this is configured to uh, automatically uh, open my password out of pass and uh, download all of my mail in this f uh, format called uh, Mailder. Uh, so for example, we can see in my .mailder directory, we have uh, a number of uh, emails. Uh, so let's see what, if I have new emails, there we go. Uh, and each of these is actually tracked in the tree and backed up. Uh, so for example, uh, you know, I can have a, a secondary computer. This could be a, a light device, uh, you know, my cell phone or something, and, and I can have just a, a piece of this while it's all backed up at home. Uh, additionally, what we're, what we're hoping to do in the future is that you could, we could write directly to uh, someone else's mailer uh, and use the network for them to uh, hear about the mail and get it, uh, uh, pull it from you, and then they would read it directly. And this would completely circumvent the email protocols, uh, SMTP, IMAP, email servers entirely. It would make email peer-to-peer, -peer, truly. Uh, and additionally, it would all be encrypted and, and uh, backed up. Oh, and here it's asking for my password because it's uh, it's in the 10 minute. I have it configured to run every 10 minutes. <laughs> and so it's, it's trying to check my mail and it's asking for my password. Uh, here we can see what I did to, to set that up. I just said every 10 minutes run offline IMAP quietly. Uh, it does, however, need my password to, to do that. So it's, it, that's why it was just prompting me. Uh, this also pairs with uh, mail client evolution. Uh, so this this is actually reading directly out of uh, this is reading directly out of my mailer, uh, and I can I can send normally, and it does still use uh, SMTP for this. Uh, but you know it's a normal user interface, and once it's configured, a, a pretty normal user experience. Uh, this also has uh, PGP uh, integrated, by the way. Uh, so that's that's a really quick overview, uh, both of the Gold command line, uh, the block tree, the default applications we would recommend for Gold OS, and uh, really the the Gold full node uh, environment. Uh, so we're going to be doing 
uh, a lot more updates to these, these scripts and libraries, uh, but you know, at least 90, 95% of the functionality is, is all there, uh, both in the command line and the library form. Uh, we're really uh, encouraging and engaging uh, developers to, to use these tools at this point. We have a number of uh, projects that are, are building on our, our system and, and helping us uh, collaborating with these tools. Uh, and we're going to make these uh, tech uh, sessions, of these public tech sessions, a uh, weekly uh, uh, event going forward. Um, not sure if it'll be on Friday. We'll we'll put it post it in the Telegram chat. Uh, but uh, if you're a developer, you're interested in decentralized systems, or you're making an app that has uh, more robust uh, functionality than than a simple ledger, uh, we highly encourage you to to look into these tools. Uh, if you need to have consensus or or make decentralized uh, storage and management of any sort of media any sort of more complex legal contracts, uh, human language contracts, those sorts of things. Uh, we think that gold is an ideal tool. Uh, so tune in next week, and we'll uh, go further in depth. Thank you.